I remember when I got Skateboarder of the Year, I think I was a little bit lit, and uh, <laughs> I was like, they started calling off the names, and I remember, that I think they maybe started with the top 10. And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't even make top 10. That's pathetic, because I'd done well in the contest thing. And then it kept going, and I was like, oh, top five, no way. And then it came down, and they are like, da-da-da, and I was just shut floored at the same time, and I was a little bit buzzed. And uh, I <laughs> I was also in punk rock at the time, and I had cut my hair, and I would worn some kind of clothing stuff, and they're like, you know, make a speech, da, 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 and I just didn't really make any kind of a speech. And I remember I just, I, I, I think I spit at the cameras a couple of times, the photographer dude, and kind of maybe f tried to pick my nose and stuff. But they were so pissed in the industry of skateboarding at that time, like... Here's the most prestigious blah, blah, blah kind of an award. And this is what these guys are saying about it. Mm -hmm. Pro dudes were like, yeah, those guys are terrible. They're the worst representation of skateboarding for us. And the kids were like, yes. Right. Yes, we love these dudes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Steve Olson. I'm Jamie Brissick. This is Soundings, brought to you by The Surface Journal. The Journal is a member-supported publication made possible by sponsorship from FCS, Finisterre, Howler Brothers, Patagonia, Rainbow, Vans, and Yeti. More like a book than a magazine, The Journal delivers 136 pages of independent storytelling every eight weeks, covering the people, culture, travel, and art of surfing. If you want to learn more, if you'd like to subscribe, please visit surfersjournal.com. Steve Olson was inducted into the Skateboarding Hall of Fame in 2014. As it says on the Skateboarding Hall of Fame's website, quote, Steve Olson and the scope of his influence over five decades of skateboarding is nearly impossible to overstate and almost equally impossible to summarize. A legendary character of near biblical proportions, Olsen first stepped on a skateboard in 1966 and would turn pro alongside Dwayne Peters and Steve Alba as Santa Cruz's response to the Bones Brigade in 1979. That same year, Olsen would win Skateboarder Magazine's coveted Skateboarder of the Year Award, which he famously accepted dressed in bondage pants, a white blazer, and a polka dot tie. And he would go on to release his game-changing checkerboard model in 1980, end quote. Steve's a surfer, a musician, an actor, and a visual artist. I've seen his frontside top turn. I've been sprayed by his frontside top turn. He plays bass, he plays guitar, he sings, and he's been in a bunch of bands. Like his pops, Steve's son, Alex Olson, is a pro skater and hyphenate. We spoke in Steve's Hollywood studio. Outside were helicopters, loud cars, loud voices, all manner of Melrose Avenue. Okay. <laughs> this is so strange. We're going. Steve, sure. well, Steve, welcome to the show. Oh, well, th well thanks, Jamie, for having me. So, uh, so. I will be talking in a robot voice no, from we here can do on that. out. No, we, I was actually thinking we should do, we can, a, we can AI your voice. Um, oh, I'm, I'm AI. <laughs> uh, this is a hologram. My first encounter with you was uh, on the pages, in the pages of Action Now magazine, 8081, I'm guessing. And as I remember it, my memory can be faulty, but as I remember it, you were sort of banging the lip on a surfboard and grinding or doing an air in a pool on a skateboard. And then the I, I in the piece, it talked about punk rock, and it was this kind of um, collision of surf, skate, and punk, which at that time were the things that I loved most in the world. Right. And here was Steve Olson in the mag who uh, who shared the same thing. Can you remember that time and kind of what was going on? Yeah, I mean, I can try to recall as good as I can. I mean, look, but I, the article you speak of, it was kind of a surfing, skating, or skating, surfing, whatever, because of my background in skateboarding. But yeah, uh, 
I, you know, you surf and you skated, and all of a sudden the music came into the, the scene, and it was it kind of made sense in a sense, but at the same time, you know, there was like a, a dress type of fashion thing going on, and then there was a uniform of boots and leather jacket, but before that it was different, with all kinds of you know, it seemed like art students were basically running punk rock and blah, 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 either way. But yeah, the surfing and the skating article. Yeah, there was one shot, I think I was shooting with Craig Feynman and I was sm- I was trying to pop an ollie and I was doing like this layback thing off the lip. Um, then there was one where I used to kick out my, my tail and kind of do like a rock and roll slide with the lip. On a skate or a surfboard? On a surfboard. Yes, that's what I remember. Yeah, I mean, the board is kind of... I was going on a ride. Yep. It was an interesting time. In a long john. Yes, in a long john. On one of my brother's boards. I want to say there was some leopard skin or checkerboard in there somewhere. I mean, checkerboard was really hardcore because it was the graphic on my skateboard. Okay. Which could easily be uh, confusing. There 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 was was no... I don't think there was checkerboard back then. There were things... I mean, before that there was, but not at that point. I just remember screaming off the page for whatever reason. It might have even been just the profile that was written was the punk thing. And the punk thing was new to me and exciting to me. And I think um, there was really uh, a kind of attitude that came with it, right? Uh, yeah, I, the attitude was basically, this is ours. Yeah. We've made it ours. But, I mean, in the whole punk scene, they didn't really care about the surfer, skateboarder kids. They thought, ugh. Being infiltrated by these maniacs, definitely, definitely up here, yeah, in L.A., Hollywood, and all of that. But it didn't matter because it was, it just exploded. Yep. The that I think at that time it was it was skating and surfing were so kind of aligned, and uh, my my skateboarding days in the seventies, as I'm imagining yours were were you'd skate as if you were riding a wave. You'd be looking for banks. You know, we used to skate Kenter and you'd ride it as if it were a, right. a, a yeah, long Yeah, everything left. with a bank, was yes. a left, a right, whatever it was. I mean, I would spend hours in in the driveway with just the little dip of where it allows the car to come in and out and the curb drops down. And just doing front sides and back sides and destroying the grass. Yeah. But um, that's like when you're 10, 11, 12. Yep. Yeah. But it was all related to like kind of doing an off the lip. Right. And you grew up in Orange County? I grew up down in a place called Rossmore. Okay. Which is like, you know, kind of a middle class area. How'd you find your way to skating and how'd you find your way to surfing? I found my way to surfing because I grew up with an older brother, Bucky, who was also a surfer and skated and... That whole thing, but at the same time, uh, we didn't live, what, maybe five minutes from the beach in a car, and you could ride your bike down the drainage, the riverbed, to the beach, and surfing just was part of life Mm -hmm. at that time. That was like 1970. Yeah. So it was between kind of the, I mean, the shortboard thing was coming in, but they were still longer. I just remember Petrillo and... Plastic Fantastic and those types of boards. Mm-hmm. Like, really, Petrillo. I don't, do you know this I board? I don't think I do. Right. I, it, I remember was, Plastic it, Fantastic. Yeah, but the Petrillo was a weird board because it was still like maybe seven in the seven feet zone. Weird egg shapes. But I learned on a Joyce Hoffman and a, a Haley's longboard. Okay. First, you started belly boarding. I did. Mm-hmm. We started belly boarding the first couple of times. And I had an older brother, and then all of a sudden we were like, oh, we need surfboards, and we started surfing, and then we became surfers. And then skateboarding, we were skateboarding back then as well, just because it was a toy. Yeah. And it was fun, and you could emulate surfing. I mean, it was hardcore emulating surfing, basically. I remember I'd made longboard, not longboards, I shouldn't say longboards, but wideboard. I made a wideboard in, in my wood shop class. And I had I'd become sponsored by Wayne Brown surfboards back then, but I had made this long this kind of knee board skateboard just so I could knee paddle on it, 
and then hop up onto my feet. Hmm. Because back then, knee paddling wasn't really happening. Yeah. But there was a dude, Jeff Hackman, that knee paddled. Yes. I don't know if you remember yeah. this. I don't remember. There were a couple other guys. There's another Jeff. guy down at Huntington Pier, John Davis. Okay. He used to knee paddle. Seen Nueva, he would ride a longboard. He didn't knee paddle. He knee paddled his longboard. Everyone knee paddled longboards. But yeah, I was like into this giant pig skateboard just because I could knee paddle on it hmm. and hop up and then drop in on the driveway like I was dropping in on a wave. Yeah. And we had certain driveways. One was Waimea, another one was Pipeline, another one was, you know, just throughout the surf. I, I like locations. W- my my neighborhood when I was skateboarding, I didn't. We didn't name places like that, but I I sure like that. Um, but I I I do I miss that kind of intimacy with every crack in the sidewalk and the little grease you know oil stains that you could slide bird up Bertelman off of. Right. That well, this is like pre Bertelman though, kind of for okay. me. Okay. Yeah, I mean Lopez, Barry Kanapuni, uh, Mike Purpose, those kind of cats. Were were happening. And then Bertelman was coming, charging hard along with Buttons, Mark Lydell, and yep. the rest of those rippers, Carvalho brothers. Yep. Michael Ho was surfed very cool for my, in my opinion, was like whoa. Yeah, everyone you've mentioned has such great style, and I'm wondering what was it that drew you to both skating and surfing at the time? Like, what was it about it that that made it feel like your place? I just. Because it was part of what we were doing. I don't know exactly. I mean, I was a swimmer before that, so the water was nothing. Uh, I was athletic, so skateboarding wasn't hard. Like, you know, when you take a slam, it was like getting hit playing football or sliding in baseball, blah, blah, blah. But uh, why? I don't know why. I can't. I can't I, because we were just into it. Mm-hmm. It's just something that happens when you're a kid and you find something that is interesting and new. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the 70s, so it was pretty new. Yeah. It was before your it was before urethane wheels and then urethane wheels. I mean, it's the same story. It goes on and on. Right. <clears throat> but surfing was insane because it was not considered what it is nowadays. Mm-hmm. Back then you're like, oh, surf bum. Yeah. What do you do? For sure. Oh, sell drugs. Yeah. You don't work. You just stay at the beach all day and surf. Did that appeal to you? Did that like kind of no margins of society appeal? No. I mean, I wasn't. I wasn't a surf. I mean, we loved surfing. Period. Yeah. We loved skateboarding. Um, we were going to school. Yeah, but you know, it, for myself, I was drawn to surfing because of that. Because I had that. I I grew up in a in a straight middle class family and loving parents and everything was so kind of perfect that I felt um what I found at the beach was this sort of place to rebel, I guess you might say. And then as the punk came in, I realized that while one happens in, you know, late at night in 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 Hollywood with pasty white skin and the other one happens on the sand in or in the water with sunshine. A they, bit of a contrast. A contrast, but they attitudinally they were kind of aligned. I mean, there was like a rebellion to both, I guess. What is that word? Attitudinally. I don't even know if it's a word, Steve. <laughs> just but I just that's probably the first time I've ever said it. No, I like it though. But they, I, but I was they had like, that, whoa. But, but they were both it, rebellious. I'm not checking you. I'm okay. just asking. I'm I was like, oh, my, I need this word. I'm gonna pull out my dictionary. Attitudinally. <laughs> no, but no, the question, I mean the rebellion it was just like the energy and the and the feeling you got from it. And yeah. then the energy from the music, because obviously it's supercharged back then. It yeah. seemed like it was supercharged and it was new and it was Interesting, and I mean, you didn't have five minute drum solos, and yeah, which later on you realize, oh, that drummer is really amazing, yeah. But at the same time, you're a little kid, and I think when you're younger, you have a little bit more, uh, your attention deficit is like, let's go, let's get something going here, and yep, I don't know, it's probably wrong, but it's not for us. But the 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 energy both yeah like the energy of the the in the water the energy of skating, I mean we used to skate swimming pools when it could become like when it was like okay now I can throw a front side grind like I can do an off the lip yeah but it was like oh I can power chuck my skateboard mm-hmm. 
and try to break the coping yeah. on a front side or at least loosen it so then the next guy can hit it and pop it up. What was that like for that that period sneaking into backyards with empty pools? I mean, there was... um. What Sneaking in the backyards or into places that you were told do not trespass was insanely amazing. Yeah. I mean, you're like hopping and all of a sudden now you're kind of secret service, uh, I spy. Yep. And now you're on a recon mission and you don't want to get caught. You want to get in. You want to ride this pool. You want to ride this ditch. You want to ride a pipe. And then there was the cat and mouse aspect of it with the authorities that are to prevent, trying to prevent you from riding. And it was amazing. I mean, how insane is that? I remember I was skating Kenter. I had come up to visit a friend of mine who had moved up to Kenter, by Kenter, actually in the Palisades, um, in the Highlands up there, mm-hmm. kind of by Flyball and all that. Okay. Anyway, I was like, let's go ride this, this pool we've seen in all the movies. And I wasn't the greatest skateboarder at the time, but there was probably, let's say there was a hundred kids in the schoolyard, just having fun, doing whatever they're doing, skating, hanging out. And all of a sudden like four squad cars pulled up. And it was insane to see how everyone just ditched and split. And the cops would make their choices of, okay, you go after them, you go after them, you go after them, you go after them. Again, the cat and mouse. And then just like the energy and the adrenaline of running from not getting, from not wanting to get caught. Right. Was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Truly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't get any more fun than that back then. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's incredible. I mean, hiding the ivies on the corner of Kinter and whatever the street, like uh, South Street of there, and hiding there, and the cops are walking through the ivy, and my friend is saying, I'm giving myself up, I'm giving myself up, and I'm holding them down like, no, 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 they're not going to keep coming. And then they stopped and they moved on. And he's like, oh, I thought we were going to get caught. I thought for sure we were going to God, I was about to give myself up and just turn myself in and let them and deal with the consequences. Like, shut up already. <laughs> God, what is wrong with you? They didn't see us. I think I was 14. I was smaller then. Yeah. Um, you're in the Skateboarding Hall of Fame. You won Skateboarder of the Year. You've achieved so much. But the, the interesting thing is, like, it was very, like, uncharted at that time, right? It wasn't, it wasn't I mean, about but- contests, right? For for my experience of, of going through the so-called ranks, I went to, I want to say that we skated as amateurs in the USSA, United States Skateboard Association. And they were having skate contests at skate parks while the, the pros were doing like Long Beach Freeformer, it's Catalina Classic, blah, blah, blah. And we were like the amateurs. Mm-hmm. But we were getting better and better and better and honing our, our skills on the skateboard. And then it cuts to, oh, they're going to be having a, sw- uh, a contest, the Hester Series, in a swimming pool at these skate parks. I was riding for Santa Cruz at the time, and I was a kind of park pool guy, whatever. Uh, We're turning you pro. But it was at the same time, it was the first pro pool contest, so it was kind of groundbreaking. Okay. Or pioneering that. Right. When you think back on your skateboarding career, do you you remember contests, or do you remember more sessions or sort of... What I remember was... uh, I remember surfing and surfing was so amazing. And I had surfed some contests, but contests weren't really all of that. It was luck of a draw back then. Yeah. Did you get good waves? Blah, 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 whatever. Same old shit. But um, but it was just fun surfing, like going surfing and it wasn't as crowded as it is now. Yep. 
and just cruising with your friends and surfing and watching your friend get just get barreled and then not come out and get pounded into the rocks at Seal Beach River jetties, well, the Seal Beach jetties, and thinking that's super funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And those were the times in like knee paddling out, at, I, I surfed there a lot, and knee paddling out, like putting a piece of, of chewing tobacco in my mouth and knee paddling out with my friend and we're spitting, and we're like 12 or something. All of a sudden we get hit by a wave and swallow the chew <laughs> and then just turn green mm -hmm. and just feel horrible. But I mean, those are the memories that stick with me more so than anything. I mean, I surfed, had to surf against Buddy Lamas a couple of times. Oh yeah, Buddy. And Buddy was on fire. I'm like, he, he was. ripped. I met Jay Adams through surfing down at Huntington. Okay. Before knowing him through skateboarding. But skateboarding was insane through the fact, I'm going to jump all over the place. Sure. Because the first pool contest, we had like skated pools in contests in amateurs as amateurs in the amateur series. And uh, I remember going down to the contest and you knew all the cats anyway, but all of a sudden you're like, you have this realization, I had this realization, I should say, that, um, wow, here it is. We're skating against these dudes that are like the pros. And they're like, quote unquote, the best. And we, are keeping up with them and maybe we're going to smoke them mm -hmm. and I, you know i was competitive i don't know yeah. competitive nature of, uh, of the human being so that contest got rained out to cut to the next weekend i think it got rained out twice i'm not sure but now everyone has the pool more wired and it's like wow it looking it's looking good can definitely make the top 10. There are a lot, I don't know how many people were in the contest. Say there were 40 people in the contest. Tied a sack, but yeah. And I was like, wow, this is good. I remember I was in the middle of my runs and I would like come in and make an error, kind of like doing a one-footed carve. And then my wheels breaking and sliding down. I'm thinking, oh, I'm going down. And then just putting my foot on the back of my board and pushing into fakie for a recovery and they're like wow one footed carve into uh into fakie that's insane mm -hmm. at the time mm -hmm. and it was like that was uh i was gonna say you're like i was 16 at the time wow it was nuts it was fun it was insane it was all new too who, who were your heroes at this time i mean did we heroes i mean there were people that we looked Love, looked up to totally i mean but they were more surfers than they were skateboarders yeah that's so interesting i mean i really liked in 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 the surfing world i mean i used to love how how smooth lopez was mm -hmm. and then buttons and bertelman were amazing and then terry fitzgerald style and speed and then seeing reno abalera Seeing Jeff Hackman's power, mm -hmm. Billy Hamilton's smoothness, yeah. um, Nat Young down in Australia, just like whoa, those guys are like on another level yeah. of serving, and they were. I remember serving Zuma one time a little bit later, but with uh, uh, Rolf Arnaz. Mm -hmm. Is that his? Yeah, yeah. You say his last name. Yeah, and just seeing this dude paddling and catching waves. So much earlier than anybody else. I was like, how is this cat doing this? Yep. And ripping. Yep. Those kinds of things were amazing. I mean, I, I've story surfers, skateboarders. I liked Bruce Logan. I liked these guys. They were like freestyle dudes. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I liked T.A. Yeah, Tony Allen. T.A. had his own scene going on. Yep. And he was aggressive. And there were other guys that were really good, too. There's a guy from the South Bay, Kevin Anderson, the worm, mm -hmm. that was as radical as it gets. Yeah. But again, it was all new. But I really, I liked T.A. Tony's approach. Like, he was out yeah. to do and prove something. Yeah. It was so surf-related. It's interesting to me that you would, when I ask about heroes or influences, you would cite surfers before skateboarders because they were so, they crossed over so easily back then, I think. It was one in this, I didn't want to say, it seemed like surfing was, 
the top tier. Yeah. Skateboarding was the tier level down. But I could surf, so I didn't really trip on that. Yep. Not that I was out surfing Waimea, but I was a little kid, but yeah, I mean there were guys there was a guy down in, in Seal Beach, Dennis Ward, that was amazing watching seeing Mike Purpose surf. They all had amazing style. John Davidson. Um I mean it just goes on and on. I just remember seeing Nueva uh -huh. when I was a kid because I served Huntington a lot back then. And there's there's this memory I have, and maybe I've romanticized it, but I don't think so. But I just remember it was in the mid-'70s, and here we are kind of at the beach early, not sun up, but close to it. And here comes this, I want to say a silver shadow or a silver cloud. I'm not sure the make of the Rolls Royce, but it was a white Rolls or maybe it was a Jag. I don't remember the car, okay. but had like a stack of surfboards on it. And we were like, wow, that's wild. Kind of, I hate to say, but more rock starish. Yeah. And then out pops Nueva and he had this kind of wild kind of, longer glam hair because mm -hmm. in the early days he had short hair and he was riding those with these but he pops out and I, what I recall and I'm sure I'm embellishing just to make it interesting to myself but I'm going with it he pops out and he has this wild 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 hair he has on these giant glasses and he has on a fur coat and he has on platform shoes and he has on these really wickedly stylish, uh, yeah, well, that's for lack of remembrance, suede pants. Mm -hmm. And then he has like this assistant dude carrying a couple of boards down with his wetsuit. And, wow. And then him going out and just destroying Huntington Pier hmm. on his fish. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this dude, he just flies. And he had, a, he had a pretty wide stance back then with the fish. I don't know if mm -hmm. it's probably before your world. But um, no, I do remember like, this. That's time. insane. Mm -hmm. Just made an impression. Cut to, I see him a couple of years later. And he's longboard. We're, long, we're surfing the south side of Huntington because the left was happening back then. The sound was right. And, uh, and he's paddling, he's knee paddling out on a longboard. And he has a cigarette in his mouth. He's just knee paddling out and he still has his long hair. Paddles out into the lineup, kind of a little further out. Still smoking the cigarette. Knee paddles into a wave. Gets barreled while smoking. <laughs> comes out of the barrel dry. And kicks out and pops back and knee paddles back out in the lineup. Continuously smoking. Wow. Not smoking while he's in the tube, but probably not smoking throughout the whole ride. But yeah. he still had the smoke in his mouth. And Incredible. maybe I'm making this up, but I don't think so. No, I don't, think, I don't think I I don't think I'm that creative. But it was just so insane to me. You know what's And I remember meeting him much later on and I I shared the story with him and he just laughed. And and he he loved. It seemed like he was like, oh, that's cool. This kid remembers. But what you say, I have kind of similar stories from my upbringing of surfing Malibu and, and right. seeing my heroes. And it was um, the thing that I the thing that I take from all that is there was um, style was so important. You know, there was like a level of performance and style, and it wasn't just how you rode a wave, it was how you showed up at the beach and it was how you slid into your wetsuit and how you waxed your board and how you strutted down the beach. Um, and I think you and I are close enough in age, there, it was an era where style really mattered most of all. I mean, style was truly part of it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, 100%. It doesn't... Yeah. I mean, style is style. Yeah. But here's a question. This is a philosophical question. But the question. style was so, there was like such difference in styles back then. I just remember seeing a surf film. Okay. Never getting to see this guy ride, but I just remember riding a squared off like longboard. <laughs> that was a little shorter now. But just making these crazy square turns on it. Hmm. And just like, wow, these cats are. 
but they all had their style. Like I, I don't, I mentioned some of them, but like Billy Hamilton had his style. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Dora had his style. Yes. I mean, it just goes down the line. Jay Riddle had his drop knee cut back. Yeah. Side slipping all over the place. Herbie Fletcher, you know, get on the n- nose and watch Herbie side slip down at. I mean, there's so many stylish, different styles. Some styles you didn't really dig, but they definitely had, there's was, was a distinction between them. For sure. I remember being, this would have been the late 90s, I was at the um, Quicksilver Bowl Riders contest in Marseille. Right. And the, and the event happened, and after the event, there were a bunch of people just taking turns doing runs, and Jake Phelps, the yeah. late editor of Thrasher, right. was there, and he was drinking a beer on the edge of the, of this bowl pool. Right, right. And um, it was late in the day. The contest had finished. Everyone's hanging out. And I remember Jake just sort of with like the lightest touch just let go of the nose of his board. It fell down and he stepped on it with like total economy of movement as if like nothing happened. Jumped onto his board, rolled down, and did the most beautiful like backside 50-50 grind <laughs> and then came out of it, but the beer in his hand the whole time. And, and <laughs> like didn't. Didn't even bother to set it down. But I right. remember looking at that and Jake being of, of our generation, I remember thinking, God, that's like such a, it's what I remember so vividly. And one of the things that really turned me on about surfing and skating when I was young is there was that style and there was, it was almost theatrical. It was like a, it was like a full blown performance and whether that was done self-consciously knowing that there were eyeballs looking or right. whether that was just coming from deep within, but that was such an important part of it. But what, what, what I asked this, here's the big question I would ask. Is that stuff like innate or is that stuff or can it be learned? Like is it or is it both? You know, like are we pulling from our inspirations and learning what that elegance and style and whatever know, that's that- a question. That's an individualist question, no? Yeah. Um did you have So can I sit there and answer all the people? Mm-mm. No, no. For you though. No, but I mean I just look at from when I was a kid, we had different types of, of people that you looked up to. You had Bruce Lee. I'm going to go through the obvious. Bruce Lee, the martial artist. Bruce Lee, the martial yeah. artist. You had Joe Namath calling the Super Bowl. I think it was 69. You have Muhammad Ali, who was beyond amazing. Yep. Um, I mean, it goes, I, I like, you have Wayne Wong. He's a skier back in the day uh, of the that skied bumps. And he would go through, I mean, I've said this thousands of times. Maybe not that many, but... Um, He'd be th- going through the bumps, just destroying the bumps and bumps are moguls and, mm-hmm. and on skiing. I don't know. Yep, I know. Yeah. Most people should. Well, and he would just slam. Would slam. He would just fall. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden you just see this kind of explosion of snow and you think, oh, my God. And all of a sudden, boom, he'd pop up mm-hmm. and then get right back into his fall line. And keep going, you're just like, wow, that was insane. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, it's changed so much now. Yeah. But, yeah, it was insane. So, I mean, we had those types of cats that we were pull- that I was pulling from, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know. I was, I'm an admitted poser, and I, um, I loved all the Dogtown guys, and I had their pictures on my wall, and I actually would – make notes of sort of the clothes they wore because that was that the coolest That is so stuff. amazing. Yeah, and I mean, like Tony Alvin, Jay Adams, I mean, I, I studied their pictures so much and I really, the the hand jive. So for myself, it was very much learned. And I may have had something that was already there, but I definitely- Emulated. Emulated. And then the same thing happened with surfing in my era. I mean, you know, my hero was Tom Curran. And, right. And it was, where, where's the hand placement? Where's the shoulder? Where's the chin? Where are the eyes looking? Right. Um, and kind of that breaking down, um, which was sort of almost uncool at that time, because I think maybe the generation or the era before mine, um, the whole idea was to look like you, you would never want to look like you were trying. You know, that was like the whole thing. You And, and I think that the era of pro surfing, uh, competitive surfing that I stepped into, it was actually, okay, now we're going to be, we're going to take, take ourselves seriously and we're going to be pro athletes and we're going to do all the things that tennis players and golf players do that in the surf, co- the codes of surfing before that was totally uncool and not, you know, this is like why we surf because we don't, 
really work so on our stroke. You, you think know? in the what eighties are we talking about? T- mid eighties? Uh, yes, I would say mid eighties when I got really Which serious. When you about started, this stuff. got into yeah. the whole system. Yeah, but the skating stuff happened earlier because I, I had older brothers. I, I have an, one older brother. My oldest brother died, but I. Um, I was brought into that scene at like 10 years old. I had a Dogtown skateboard from Wes right. Humpston. So I was a little, How'd little you kid. How I read that Wes Humpston made the Dogtown skates that were all over the magazines with those beautiful graphics on the bottom. Right. And I, these were Yellow Pages days. I somehow, I think I was staying with my cousin in West LA. I you looked did in not Santa look Monica. I looked up his number. I called him. And he was listed. He was listed. Yes. He, was, he was off of Ocean Park. And I said, and I called him and I said, hey, my name's Jamie. I'm a, I'm, I'm a skateboarder and I wanted to see if I can get one of your boards. And I had such a high little voice at the time. And he, and he, he, at, in the middle of the conversation, he goes, are you a girl? And I remember it just crushed me because I'm, you know, trying to be, a, trying to be a grown up already. Right. But he basically, How old are you? I was 11 actually. Right. And he, he said, I'm making one for myself, but I'll sell it to you $20 for the deck. Um, and I said, great. My mom will drive me down, give me the address. And we went down and got it from his garage right off of Ocean Park. Yeah, yeah. And I had a Dogtown skate. And it was- It's a, amazing for yeah. 20 bucks. Yeah. It's a big deal. I wonder how much that board would be worth now. I still have it in- Oh, you do? I have it on the wall. The, yeah. It's been beaten up. They're, the wheel wells, you know, he would like shave yes. out the wheel wells so they're all broken and glued back together. Right. So it's like a Frankenstein together board that if you stood on it would all break. Right, right, right. Um, so it's a wall hanger at this point. It was it was probably like for it to become a wall hanger was never its intention in the early days, <laughs> but it is a wall hanger. Right, no, that's all right. You have memories of that. Yeah. What is your greatest skate moment? What is my greatest skate moment? Is there, is there either a... My a, greatest skate moment was, is still... We're still here right now, but um, was probably being on the cover of Skateboarder with my kid. Nice. That was pretty cool to me. It was amazing, like doing a picture with him at some little bowl at Supreme, blah, blah, blah. And him telling me how to do it. And I'm just thinking, yo, been writing doubles long before you're even considered. And now you're telling me how, it, anyway, but the the photo turned out cool. Like I'm doing some kind of front side thrust type of grind and he's doing a boneless behind. And yeah, that was like, that's pretty amazing to have, to be able to share the cover of a magazine. Like, I mean, A, being on the cover of a magazine is pretty insane. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, it's it's insane. But to have it with your son was really, really cool. Yeah. I like getting in the Skateboarder Hall of Fame. Yeah, tell me about that. Really, That was cool. I mean, you kind of appreciate, I don't know. I don't want to sound egotistical in it, but it's like, oh, wow, you're recognized for something. It's a big deal. in, In some way. Yeah, it was really cool. I was really proud of that. There are a lot of Hall of Fames out in the world, but I think the Skateboarder Hall of Fame is one that I admire tremendously. Oh, really? Well, there are other Hall of Fames that I wouldn't wouldn't be enamored of or impressed by, but no, I think like... Surfing has a Hall of Fame, yes? There are various ones. I think Australia has there, a version. Oh, right. there's, a, so there's, there's, one, not, there's a Huntington Beach Walk of Fame, I believe. Right, right, right. Yeah, I know all of those ones, but there's not one... Mm. Surfing Hall of Fame, that is. No, not not necessarily. Right. I mean, there's a Florida Hall of Fame of skateboarding. And there's some other ones. I mean, it's. What do you remember about going on stage to accept your um, your award or your whatever it is that they give the Hall of Fame? Oh, just nervous and also excited, and being able to let my parents see some kind of accomplishment. Yeah. Them being in the crowd, my yep. kid was there. Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, that was very, really, really, rather exciting to me. Yeah, underneath, maybe like when you're doing it, you're like, "Oh yeah, this is cool, this is cool." But in my heart, it was like, "Wow, that's amazing! I actually made it into this thing." Yeah. Why so late? Just kidding. What year was it? I don't think it was 2014. Okay. Just making a joke. Uh, um, <laughs> but I grew up with an older brother mm-hmm. who was a talented dude, but he also was an airbrusher. And I remember when we got into surfing, he was like, he's an artistic, like beyond artistic guy, like an artist, period. And uh, 
I remember his first, we, he made like this weird belly board, knee board first go like in the early 70s. Drew some dragon on it and then became an airbrusher and he did all of the wave tools hmm. back in the day. Oh, those with were great Quark airsprays. And, I remember those. And Murray and Parker and the rest of those guys. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the whole Echo Beach thing. Yeah, that was a vibrant time. It was a vibrant, colorful time, but he was the cat doing all the airbrushing, and it was his airbrushing. It really wasn't, I'm sure it wasn't those guys going, oh, you know, maybe this or that. It was definitely an influence from his punk rock experience, and he was a glam, mm -hmm. he was into the glam scene, and the whole glam scene had their whole fashion thing. Surfing has its fashion, skating has its fashion. I mean, every walk of life has a fashion yeah. sense to it. Yep. But, I mean, the punk rock thing was really... I found the fashion was amazing. It was like kind of maybe do it yourself. I mean, England, New York, they all had their a couple of stores that actually provided some amazing clothes. But, you know, you had to go out and go thrift shopping and all of that. And yep. What was the was first? So fun. What was the first punk show you went to or the first time you sort of felt the, the, felt the vibe? I think the first time I felt the vibe, because we are late to it as well, but... Um, just hearing like the Ramones and or the Clash or the Pistols, and then you know, I remember like I remember the one song that really, really hit home hard on me was uh, Mink Deville's Cadillac Walk, and it's not exactly punk rock, mm -hmm. but it had this sense of cool mm -hmm. that was amazing. I remember seeing the Dead Boys up on Sunset Boulevard all in black, and it was like I, back then. Being a surfer, it wasn't cool. Yeah. To be a punker, a punk rocker, and a skater, surfer, and all of that. But, I mean, you love surfing, too, and you love skateboarding. Mm -hmm. But you also love the new energy of this whole scene. Yeah. Yeah, I, I... And you're a kid, and you're kind of, like, swayed this way or that way. and It was so much fun, and it was so interesting. And I remember when I got Skateboarder of the Year, I think I was a little bit lit and... uh I was also, I was so shocked to get that award at the time at like the present. I remember they started what, calling seven, off the name. What year was it? 78. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. And then <laughs> I was like, they started calling off the names. And I remember, the, I think they maybe started with the top 10. And I was like, oh, shit. I didn't even make top 10. That's pathetic because I'd done well in the contest thing. And then it kept going. And I was like, oh top five no way and then it came down and they're like da 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 and i was just floored at the same time and i was a little bit buzzed and uh i, I was also in punk rock at the time and i had cut my hair and i worn some kind of clothing stuff and they're like you know make a speech da, da, da. and i just didn't really make any kind of a speech and ta had gotten second and he threw his trophy in the trash because he thought he should have won and I don't know what to say about that, but I remember I just, I, I, I think I spit at the cameras a couple of times, the photographer dude, and kind of maybe f tried to pick my nose and stuff. But they were so pissed in the industry of skateboarding at that time. Like, here's the most prestigious blah, blah, blah kind of an award, and this is what these guys are saying about it. Mm -hmm. And I remember some of the other skater, like pro dudes were like, yeah, those guys are terrible. They're the worst representation of skateboarding for us. And the kids were like, yes. Right. Yes, we love these dudes. Yeah. I don't know about love these dudes, but like we can relate to these dudes. They're not like saying it's all that, even though it was all that to me. Yeah. Underneath, I was like, whoa, this is insane. I mean, like, you can look back now. And it's way more interesting to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting the word at the time, it was like, "Oh, fuck that!" You yeah. Know? But that kind of defiant attitude, and what like the skater, what the what the kind of administrators of the sport or the sport organizers might have thought is like being d disrespectful or defiant or whatever. In many ways, that stuff that you did, that that the Dogtown skaters did, it, it's like when we think of skateboarding, that all that stuff is in that kind of mix. Like that that became the DNA of a skateboarder in so many ways, you know? Right. And did it translate into surfing at all? 
You know, it's really interesting because around the same time that I- Do you know I, what I mean? I'm asking. I'm not saying it did. I don't, I don't really I don't, have any recollection It of feels that. like it's not. When I look at surfing today, that for the most part, the main competitive surfers, there's none of that. I mean, they're, no, no, they're no. playing they're, by they're, the rules. But I do remember at that time- They're hardcore athletes. Yeah, they're hardcore athletes. I remember at that time I was a, I was a serious surfer. I was competing and I was in the NSSA. And then NSSA was the National Scholastic Surfing Association. Right. And to be on the, on the national team, you had to up- uphold like a certain uh, grade point average. I think it was a C plus or above. It wasn't that high. Right. But um, there was a was thing. Was that a challenge? Well, you I You had w- to work. You had to do the work to stay. Well, the, the biggest thing was that Ian Cairns and Peter Tanner were bringing this newfound kind of professionalism to the sport. And I remember feeling like on one shoulder were my surf heroes who were defiant and my skate heroes, you, yourself among them, and the punk rock folks. There was like that on one shoulder, and then there was this sort of like goody two-shoes, play by the rules on the other. Right. Um, and I felt conflicted between the two, but I felt clearly surfing was being steered in a direction that was more professional and, and um, presentable to the public because because surfing was trying to be sort of packaged and sold as it and hoping to be with the ambitions to be on a box of Wheaties alongside baseball, basketball, football, right. like a legitimate American or global sport. But it sometimes at that time felt it went against how I would how I was brought up and the things I loved most about surfing were being watered down or maybe even like squeezed out of it at that point. But with skating, I think. Um, just the very sound of skateboarding is menacing for most people. Like a non-skater, it's like a bunch of like clicks and grinds and all that stuff right, right. scares people. Who, um, when you look at skateboarding today, who are your favorite skateboarders? I mean, do I have favorite skateboarders? I just, ha- I'm in awe of how amazingly talented and what they've pushed it and where they've taken it to. Yeah. I don't know so much style is as important nowadays. Yeah. In a certain, but you can tell the difference between the styles. Yeah, one hundred percent. But I mean, there's uh, to say I have favorites. I don't. I mean, there's so many great skateboarders. Right. And there's a lot of really amazing surfers too. Yes. But I do kind of see that the surfers kind of look much more similar. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, am I? More similar in terms of their of, like the, a, of of how they how of how they surf for sure. But you know what I you think? know what I, mean? I mean I'm not saying it's bad or good. I'm just see that it's an observation. I think that's very accurate, and I think probably I would if I was to to cite a reason, it would be the main one is um, it's very clearly there's the world tour and there's a competition. There's there are judges and there's a judging criterion of what they deem to be good surfing, and, right, right. and most surfers are trying to fit that to right. win an event. Whereas skateboarding is so much less kind of governed or organized by the contest, and it's a little bit more of just in one freewheeling. Sense. I mean, but you have the free surfers. You do, and then you have. The, but they don't surf. The free surfers generally don't surf like the world tour guys. I mean, no, no, no. Like Torn Martin draws say. totally different lines than right. what Italo Ferrero draws. You right, know? right, right. Um, I have a fond memory. I remember hanging out with you in the late '90s. You were living in Malibu. You were you had guitars in your place, you had um, surfboards, you had skateboards, and you had a very young son who lived with you. You were right. And one morning we went to surf zeros together, and your young son Alex came along, and I think he hung out on the beach. And I want to say he like boogie boarded or body surfed, but you and I had a really fun surf. And then Alex seemed like a great kid. You were a single dad raising him. Right. And then a few years later, I moved to New York and I would be in Tompkins Square Park in that little area where everyone yeah, yeah, skates. Yeah. And I, I would look over and I'd go, oh, there's Steve's son and he's skating really well. Right. And so your son Alex is, has, would grow up to be one of the greats in skateboarding. I mean, he grew up and became a really great skateboarder. And he had his own style and did it his way, which was kind of really interesting to see from, you know, from a dad's point of view. I just remember coming home one day from school when he had moved in, and he was like, I'm a skateboarder. And I was like, oh, really? He's like, yeah. I was like, okay, that's cool. I have some hookups in skateboarding. And skate parks were starting to come back. Mm -hmm which was my jam. And I remember just going, okay, let's go on a skate trip. And we rolled up north and hit a couple of parks on the way. 
I mean, this is mid, whatever, mid nineties, later towards the later part of the nineties, but it was insane. And then all of a sudden here's my kid. And now he's like, oh, I'm writing for girl skateboards. I remember I took him, I took him surfing a couple of times and he wasn't, he was like, you know, he wasn't it, into surfing at that point in his life. Now he can't stop shaping surfboards on the computer. And it's insane, the commitment to surfing now. And he's a little, you know, he's a little older now. But mm -hmm. yeah, but the skateboarding thing was amazing. But he had this weird kind of, I always thought he had kind of a, this upper style, kind of like surfing more like, uh, I, don't, I won't say Lopez exactly, but it's just a little more upright and just smooth mm -hmm. and went fast and turned out to be incredible. I remember seeing him uh, going to this video that they'd been filming and called Fully Flared. And they're like, oh yeah, sit with us, sit with us, da, 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 da. And I was like, yeah, it's cool. I'm going to sit right over here. Cause I was like, oh, there's a possibility I might get a little more emotional mm -hmm. due to the attachment and, and, and the relationship. And I just remember seeing this part and I was like, yo, my eyes are tearing up. I was like so proud. Wow. And then having like being on the cover with the kid was insane. Yeah. And then seeing images of him and, and people saying, oh yeah, he rips. I, we were on a skate trip up in San Francisco, the place this, it was called the new spot. And these other cats were up there. These, dudes that were pros and I remember talking to them and they're like that one little kid down there because I had brought in maybe three or four kids with me and they're like that one kid's got a perfect kickflip and I'm thinking which one and, and my kid, Alex rolled up and they were like this one I was like oh that's my kid and they're like oh, wow he's got maybe he's got some skills to myself mm -hmm. you know not in a weird way, but interesting. Let, let show me your kickflip, and he do, he did a kickflip over some manhole thing that they lift up, and they're like, "Wow, did you see him talking about?" And I was like, "Yeah, I guess so, right?" And we went to this thing that skate. Mm, what was it? I don't know if I remember the exact name of it, but it was Old Man Skate Jam or something. It was just when everyone, like you know, everyone was a little older, obviously, and skateboarding was happening, but. I remember I was there with a lot, you know, you see all the your old friends and old peers and blah, blah, blah. But I was there with Peralta, Stacy, and uh, and he's like, your kid has got it. And I was like, what? He's like, no, no, no. Your kid's the one with the longer hair? I was like, yeah. He's like, dude, I'm telling you, he's got it. And I was like, relax. Just like his long hair. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. And then another cat was like, yo, I wanted to sponsor your kid. And my kid was like, I don't want to be sponsored by you. Uh, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden it just took off. Wow. And he did good. And, I, and, you know, people are like, oh, you you taught your kid how to skateboard. It's like, I didn't teach my kid how to skateboard. You can teach, you can take them skateboarding. And he became a really great skateboarder. Mm -hmm. And he has a backside slash. That's really, really good. Nice. Yeah. Very surfy. Really good backside slash. I, I have a picture that you would understand what I'm talking about. You can actually see a spray hitting, hmm. but there's no water. Anyway, yeah. That, that, I don't even know where, how we got on no, this. No, but the backside slash is almost like uh, in, homage, uh, in homage to his father because um, I would imagine that the era that when Alex was coming up, it was much more flip tricks and it was more sort of technical as opposed to carving verts, you know, that kind of style that we Right, but he with. wasn't really, a, I mean, he could ride banks and vert and all of that, but he was a street kid. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, and he also had this amazing, amazing pop on his ollie. Hmm. Um, so when, hearing you now say- Now he loves serving. I know that. I love. I, I see you guys surfing together. Love surfing. There could be a anything. cover with the two of you guys not skateboarding but surfing, Steve. Okay, listen, could happen. Jamie, let's not get carried away. <laughs> um, so, what about um, acting, Steve? I remember for a while you oh, were. Oh, that was always just happened to come through. But you're about to go to Paris for a film you're in. Yeah, I mean, I was in Paris a couple of years ago, 
And uh, I was painting there. And I just wanted to go and cruise in Paris for a little bit. And I had the opportunity. I thought it would be cool just to see Paris instead of going in for three days or two days or whatever and just kind of dip into the way it works over there. And I met this cat, Luca. And he shot a lot of higher fashion BTSs and stuff. I was like, what do you shoot this stuff on? And he was like, oh, I shoot it on my phone. What are you talking about? And I was like, really? And so they gave me an idea. I was like, okay, let's do, let's do a film. Let's make a little short. So we shot this little short called The Pusher. And it's a guy, I'm a guy on my skateboard, and I think I have on a, a suit coat and jeans and some sneakers. But uh, I cruise from the Trocadero, which is over by the Tower Eiffel or Eiffel Tower, and skate through Paris and just pushing. And I hope, I hope it translates, but whatever. But throughout pushing, you, can, you realize it's Paris. And it's like, why is this guy, where is this, who's, why is he pushing? What's he, where is he pushing to? And the end is, he ends up over by the Republic, and uh, there's a little kid there sitting on a bench. And I sit down next to the little kid. I get, I, you know, whatever, we click five or fist bump. And then I hand him the skateboard, and then he skates away. So it's like a passing of the torch. I love this. So it works, so. though. You were, pu- you were pushing your skateboard. I love it. I'm just pushing the vibe or the yeah. feeling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then he's just kind of like he's a four-and-a-half-year-old kid and just gets a couple pump pushes, and then he stands on the skateboard, and that's the end of the film. I like this very much. Yeah, it's all black and white, shot on the f- iPhone. Music? Uh, the music, uh, No, no voiceover. It's just this music that we had to use. At first, I'd, we'd cut it. I cut it with this friend, Robbie Taylor. Uh, out in Malibu, I know Rob. Place. Yeah. yeah. So Rob, you know, I was like, "Yo, we did this. We did some passes, and he's the best." But took all the color out, made it black and white, bumped up the contrast, tweaked the brightness, da da da, and it's just it's a cool little film. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So it's playing over there. It's debuting it at this film festival called uh, Azov, another shade view of fashion. And then I have to talk a little bit about it. And I have to come back and work on this big project on the wall. Okay, I want to talk at, about it. In Venice, which is insane. It's like an on-taking. We're sitting in your studio surrounded by artwork, paintings, sculptures, conceptual pieces, bisexual with a 69, 99... Well, that was obvious. Like that's the, such an obvious piece. And, and Tell me about bisexual. And we had done this, we had done this show. I had done, I had done bisexual, and I always liked marquee letters. I thought they looked cool, whatever. And just, just for the listener, it's B U Y sexual. So it's a play on the words. B U Y S E X U A L bisexual, and then behind it are placards that are you see in maybe it's Target or whatever kind of clothing store it may be, and it's sixty nine ninety nine. So, yep. That kind of says it's all, says it all. But this was. But it's kind of just, it's, a, it's just kind of a social commentary of sex cells. Yep. That's it. Yeah. And it's not pushing anything at all. It's just a commentary on it. Right. Wasn't this piece banned from somewhere? It was. We did a show up in, um, up in, up in Santa Barbara County, like Santa Maria. Okay. In this governmental, in this government building. And they were all excited, and it was a bunch of skateboarders. And we, I was like, yo, what a, you know, what can we show? What can we show? I mean, it's not, it's not very offensive, this one. It's obvious, you yeah. know. And it was kind of maybe made around when there was same sex marriage was happening. Okay. Maybe not, but it was, I just found it funny. Yeah. Yeah. And it was more social commentary, really. Right. And uh, at the same time, though, so we put it up there, and this guy, the guy, whatever, f- fifth district supervisor, found offense to it, and he had his assistant take it off the wall, and it was kind of in the center of the whole exhibition, and uh, 
once he touched it, it became a First Amendment thing. Hmm. And uh, it got really crazy for a minute there. Wow. Yeah, because the, the Arts uh, Council were like, hit me up and were like, we're so sorry. And I was like thinking, what happened? It fell and broke. And they're like, no, it da 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 da, this happened. And we didn't know. And now he has a petition to keep it out of the show and he can't go and just take it off the wall. Wow. And I was like, a petition? And then the people at Juice Magazine were helpful, and they said, like, oh, we'll do, let, we'll do a petition to keep it up on the wall. They had like a couple hundred signatures for to keep it off the wall. Then we got a couple of thousand people quickly, or whatever the number was, to say, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. And it ended up going back up. Hmm. But it was insane. It sounds really It was insane. Happening. And we got a, a bunch of calls from different newspapers, like, what is mean to you and all of that. And it was like, yeah, the guy didn't dig it. So he took it off the wall. Did he break my first amendment? I, yeah, sure. Is it back up? Yeah. It's over. Moving on. Yeah. Right. But bisexual. I mean, it's like, yeah, it's not like some horror picture. Yeah. 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 Blood and sure. guts. Yeah. But, yeah. But it, it has the word sexual in it. Yep. It's ter- it's bad. Yeah, in the sixty nine. Bad news. Yeah, what? How bad did, news, Jamie. How'd you find your way into Jamie. making paintings and visual art, Jamie? <laughs> there were a lot of it's bad. <laughs> the skateboards. It's bad, bad. The skateboards they were come from sex. Yeah, it's very bad. It's no, it's really, really bad. It's really bad. Um, Either way, I got into. I mean, my I, like I said, I was around my brother. I, he was the artist. I played skateboarding and surfing and. All of that and likewise, but I was influenced by him, other guys from here. I always enjoyed art. And at one point, I remember, I think it was Ned Evans. Yeah, they were doing that. a Surfrider Foundation fundraiser for Heal the Bay. Okay. Um, I hope this is right, but uh, they gave it like, he's like, oh, do you want to make a piece? And I was like, yeah, sure, I would love to. And I had made some stuff and lived downtown and made art and stuff like that. But I did a piece where they gave you a, this scaled down little balsa wood surfboard, kind of like a Petrillo, mm-hmm. but more kind of like a Dick Brewer, maybe Robbie Dick. Okay. Kind of Rhino Chaser ish. Mm-hmm. But either way, so they're like, you do whatever you want with that little balsa wood surfboard. Scale down, balsa wood surfboard. So I remember I used to go love going to like junkyards and stuff, and I really always enjoyed the fonts and the emblems off of old cars and just the car emblems. And I had a bunch of them, and I really enjoyed leopard skin. I don't know. I think I was an influence from my mom and rock and roll and fashion and all that. So I had had this. I had a. I had a jacket. Or I went out and found a jacket that had this certain type of print. Nothing like these two because they're not that great of prints. But I stretched it around a canvas. I mounted the balsa wood board on like two-inch aluminum risers that elevated up above the thing. And then I mounted this old Ford Futura logo. It said Futura on it. No association with Lenny Futura. But... It was interesting, but anyway, so yeah, I did that, and then I gave it to him, and then I remember a couple of guys were like, you know, these artists were like, well, so we really, your piece was really cool, really badass. It's our favorite piece in the show. And there were a lot of heavy cats in it, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Dig it. And then I made another piece, and I had a Cadillac emblem at the time, so it was like kind of a found object, yep. assemblage type of thing. Yep. Not paint. No paint required. Okay. No painting by numbers. And then, uh, yeah, uh, I made this other piece. It was white fur, and I had a 59 Cadillac emblem. And I just put my hand over my mouth. But, um, yeah, and then this collector bought it. And then I just got into it. And I did a show, and I did a bisexual that was maybe, I don't know, big, probably 10 feet by 8 feet. So it was kind of large, and I did a bisexual piece back then, but it was just the wood. And I had the placards, and I had like 12-inch 
marquee letters said bisexual, and this uh, some other art collector bought that, hmm. and I was in. Nice. And it wasn't like I was pursuing it or anything. And then I went deep, and I was in it, and I've been doing it ever since. Well, I remember visiting you probably four, three, four years ago, and you were working on a series, and a lot of it was based on the line, and it was we talked a lot about the line that you draw on a skateboard, the law, the line that you might draw skiing, and certainly surfing. Right, and or driving, yeah. and or motorcycle riding, yeah. and or walking. The line is a big one in our lives. I our lives think are so. Alive. I mean, I don't know, but yes. But the lines are really... But didn't you and Alex do a piece where you where you put the wheels in the skateboard? No, wheels? no, no. Tell me. We had done a show together. I had done my show. Well, I had done some work, and these guys were like, "Yo, you want to do a show?" And I was like, "Yeah." And they were like, "Okay." And they were like, "What about if you did a father and son show?" I was like, "Absolutely, one hundred percent." We did it over at this place, the Known Gallery, through Casey, and it was super amazingly fun. And blah blah blah, and. uh Alex was like, I want to do, I want to do a, this kind of minimalistic circle. And um, I was like, okay. And he was like, but I want to track paint on the canvas from one ramp to another ramp. So you go up and you do like, you know, a, a half a circle. So mm -hmm. the canvas would be at halfway. Yep. And then once that circle is done, then flip it and do the continuation of the other circle and make this abstract circle. Yep. So we did that. The show went well. He did his thing. He's a very talented little artist as well. And uh, really has his own take on it. But, you know, art is art. And uh, it's what it is. Either way. So he did that, and then these cats, these people were doing this show over at the Venice Biennale in Venice, Italy, and it was called Venice in Venice, and it was a lot of the Venice artists and some new artists from there, and they're like, we want you to come. And I was like, e okay, why? Well, we're through doing this big event, da, 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 da. and I was like, just hang out. And they're like, yeah. I was like, I have no interest in just going there and hanging out. I can hang out here. And they're like, oh, but it's the Biennale. I was like, oh, yeah, well, I'd be way more interested in participating. And they're like, well, then what can you do? And I was like, well, how about this? And I pitched them my idea. I was like, how about Alex and I will do this skateboard piece with where we used the skateboards and they're like, really? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, into it. And they're like, okay, done. You're in. Let's do it. Say, okay. Get it all together. And the Vince Biennale is the Biennale back yeah. then. Yeah. I think it was kind of before Miami Basel and all of that. Right. It was. I'm pretty sure. I'm almost positive. Either way, whatever. So we're sitting there, and I'd say, Alex, you want to go to Venice and do this thing? And we'll do. We'll just go and ride through the paint, and we'll get the energy and the motion, and blah, blah, blah. He's like, yes, let's do it. He was leaving New York at the time. I was living here. So I went over a couple, three days earlier to have the – quarter pipe built mm -hmm. with these Italian dudes that were building this little platform and the little ramp so we could hang the canvas up on the wall the vertical wall and then do the painting that way well through the lack of communication and for my lack of knowing Italian and their English wasn't very well they made the transition a little bit too tight Mm -hmm. And it was like on a little platform that probably stood like, let's say it stood a f 12 inches up, a foot up. Mm -hmm. So there's the platform and it went a certain distance, but the transition was tight. Right. And you couldn't really get up high enough on mm -hmm. the wall to mm -hmm. put the painting up there. And I do recall Alex flipping on me. Hmm. Like, I can't believe we're here and it's not, this isn't working out. And, da, da, da. and I was just like, listen, I get it. Do you understand that? There's a small communication problem. This is what we have. And 
I'm really not going to wig out about that because the fix to it all and the solution is that we will mount the canvas at the entry point and we'll put the paint on it and it's much easier to control the paint that way. We'll go through the one hit and go up on the wall, the ramp, come back and hit it again. So now we're getting two passes instead of one. It's easier to control and uh, he's still pissed, really pissed. And I don't blame him, but I'm trying to f make it go. Because it's in this plaza, there's people starting to show up and mm -hmm. we were there earlier and this was happening and now it's showtime. Yep. And we have no idea if this is going to work or not. I mean, it, in theory, it's going to work and it's going to work easily. It's not easily, but it's going to, it's going to work easier than the other way. Yep. And, um, so we're putting that, we're putting the, uh, we're stretching the canvas across and it's a good sized piece of canvas, maybe like 10 feet by 12 feet, whatever, eight feet, whatever the measurements were, I don't know. But anyway, put the paint out, first pass, it goes. Come back, come back through the second pass after going up on the ramp. Now it's going everywhere so there's like a puddle of paint that you guys there's are just spreading with your skateboard thing. wheels so I yeah see. yeah absolutely it must get slippery once you get oh in it gets paint. really fucking slippery Sketchy. but as we're stretching the canvas yeah i'm drilling the first screw into the ramp to hold the canvas in place and the bit comes off the screw head and it fucking in it, it goes deep into my my thumb my my middle finger oh shit like deep oh wow and i alex is caught this in his perif and I catch it and I'm like wow that went deeper than I thought and this is really inconvenient at the time and I'm holding it I'm applying a pressure to it because it's the end of your finger and I let it go and it just starts shooting it starts spurting blood with the beat of the heart perfect Steve <laughs> right? but what, it does. what could you ask for? and it happens to be falling onto the canvas yes right <laughs> I like and it. I close it off again I'm like, yo, I need some duct tape or something. I just need to, I need to stop this. And we, we're going to now do this live painting. And he looked at me like, I don't know if he thought this, but this is what I thought. He looked at me he was like, my dad doesn't care. He's going for it. Just like a skate trip or dropping it on the way, blah, blah, whatever it may be. Yep. And he's kind of was like, wow, he's going for it. He's really not going to let any of this get in the way. Just keep doing it, keep doing it. And now the paint is getting thrown everywhere. Nice. And I go through and I throw like a little thrust. And I just hit some paint and I just get flung. And I just slam on the other edge, on the off of the canvas, luckily, but I slam and I look at Alex and there's like thousands of people kind of watching and they're like, wow, that old guy just hurt himself. And I was just laughing like, oh, wow. I mean, falling on wood is falling on wood, but slammed, big deal. But I saw the change happened right there with Alex and I. And he was like, whoa. He really doesn't care. He, it's go time. And I don't mean in that sense of mm -hmm. go time, but it's time. The time is now, and, and he's making this. He's going for it. He's going to do it, and it's going to happen. Well, we got done doing that painting, and we're hitting it from all sides. And someone was like, oh, that's not art. And I was like, whoever you are, I don't really care what you have to say. Because the energy and, and the motion... And everything else about it was so insane. And the colors and where it was just spraying and all of that, it turned out to be one of my, the coolest pieces I've ever, 
scene. It's not like Pollock ch- throwing. Right. It's a whole different world of 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 motion and speed and yeah. It was insane, and the painting turned out so dope looking. Wow. It looked so amazing. I was like, I, that is another proud moment of my life, no, to be honest not, I, about that, because you're going into it not blind, but you're going into it with, uh, again, trust yeah. that it's gonna, something's going to happen. Yeah. Hopefully something good is going to come from it. But you maybe trust in the process yeah. and trust in, in the vibe and the energy. It was just money. It turned out it was so amazing. The blood's a nice addition too, because the it's blood was father, right son. there. Just throw some blood. Yeah, I'd like to. But think he that... didn't have his blood on it. Yeah, but you know what? So I did carrying your blood, but it's got <laughs> some Olsen DNA in it. But it turned out really, really strong. It was one of the best, best paintings that I've ever done. I love it, Steve. And we did another one. What uh, What's been most meaningful in your life? What has been most meaningful in my life? Uh, there's so many things that have good meaning behind them. Mm-hmm. They're just being, trying to be like a pretty cool and level-headed person. Nice, dude. Would be nice. It's nice. But sometimes it's hard. Very hard. Especially nowadays, more so than ever. Yeah. Like, let's say you're surfing and it's packed and you don't want to rip off this guy on the wave because he's on it. But he's just learning how to surf. And you think, oh, I'm going. (laughs) It's not being very cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? These are are the giant questions we surface. Yeah, I mean, what does it all mean? That's the question. And I I think it has to do with uh, just being, being cool. Yeah. And that's not always easy to do. Yeah. And I mean, what is success? I mean, I have, I was, what, last night I was talking to someone and I was like, the world is run by bullies. And then I see these anti-bullying campaigns. I think, yeah, but our world is being run by bullies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I just think, what if the world wasn't being run by bullies? And I don't know. Maybe I'm unrealistic. What have you learned along the way? What's what's been um... that is the most important thing I've learned, and that is just weird to me. I don't bully anyone. Yeah, but I mean, it's I think it's hard not to at times too for people. Yeah, it's kind of survival of the fittest. It's survival. Doggy and, dog. And we are we are very animalistic. Yeah, and we are just another form of upright animal yeah with a really intricate thought process yep well steve great talking with you yeah great james appreciate it (laughs) (laughs) soundings is produced by me jamie brissick and jonathan shiflett you can find it on apple podcasts google podcasts spotify and youtube our theme song is Give Me a Wave by Asuka Matsumiya and Paz Lanchanton. Soundings is brought to you by The Surfer's Journal, a reader-supported publication, made possible by sponsorship from FCS, Finisterre, Howler Brothers, Patagonia, Rainbow, Vans, and Yeti. The journal is published bi-monthly. If you haven't done so already, I encourage you to visit surfersjournal.com and subscribe. Thank you so much for listening to Soundings. We appreciate you, and until next time.